so following through now on these impact, these kind of common impact descriptions that I've provided, I'm going to transition now into speaking a little bit about some of the projects that we have been delivering and sort of moving from the planning and defining of the impact down to the project that we have delivered on the ground, so just to give some examples. And the first example is one from the Okanagan where one of the impact areas in the plan, you know, and referring back to the to the impact areas I just walked through, one of them was the changes to past populations. The the strategy that came through the Okanagan plan was an interest in improving the linkages between climate change projections, weather and pest monitoring data. So in particular, I think really improving the ability, predictive ability around pest emergence. And then the action, which again links back to that strategy was to develop some resources to really support that connection between weather and pest and disease data in the form of a decision support tool for producers, which is exactly what we were able to do. And really this was largely because there was an existing tool tool at Washington State University that took, I think, a number of years and, and a fairly big investment to develop. And we were very fortunate here in British Columbia that Washington State University was willing to partner with groups in the Okanagan to bring that tool, which is specifically focused on tree fruit, to bring that tool to the Okanagan. There was some adapting work that needed to be done and obviously refining it for the local and regional situation. So that was the focus of the project, was partnering with Washington State University to be able to transfer this tool to the Okanagan. And what this tool does, it's, it's an online tool that interferes that producers can access that provides time sensitive information for pest management decisions. It is free to the tree fruit growers and what it does is it links real time weather data with the pest models and forecasts what is happening with the pest populations at, at any given time which really enables real time and, and sort of near future pest management decisions to be made based on that data. And this is really important as we move into a more variable and unpredictable climate and producers aren't able to manage or treat pests according to the, the time in the season because we're seeing that, that variability. So this helps them to be able to respond to that. And this is just a screenshot of the way that the tool works when you get into the interface. Um, it allows the, the tree fruit producer to select the weather station or stations that are closest to them. Um, to choose which pests they're interested in receiving the information for. And the system also does provide alerts to producers, so they'll get an alert, for example, if a pest is uh, potentially, in terms of its life cycle, something important is going to be happening, is forecasted to be happening, and they can take the, uh, the necessary management actions. And it also allows um, the producer to select the type of management information they want, so there are both conventional treatment and organic treatment information available through this, through this system. So I do want to highlight that I think the reason that this project, well, there's no question that the reason this project was able to happen is entirely because of the collaborations. I've already mentioned the importance of all of that work that was done in Washington State University. Um, it was, in fact, the Okanagan Kootenai Sterile Insect Release Program that I think was aware of that work that was happening in Washington and was willing to lead this project and is continuing to, to host and, uh, and support this tool and make it available. And they were also a co-funder on, on the project. There was a lot of technical support and input from the researchers at Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada to bring their, their expertise to bear on transitioning this tool into British Columbia, as well as support and input from the Ministry of Agriculture culture and of course the industry organizations, the tree fruit growers, BC tree fruits. There were weather stations that, that the industry was holding that were integrated into this system. So it was very much a, a partnership and I think is a really good example of the kind of decision support tool that assists with adaptation. So shifting to quite a different context of the caribou and the cattle sector, but really again looking at improving the kinds of tools that are predictive tools that we have available. In the caribou there was a lot of concern about the changing wildlife and ecological systems that are that, and what will occur on the rangelands that the cattle industry requires for their for their livestock and also in particular thinking about changing hydrology within that system and and how the industry is going to to manage going forward. So a lot of concern about maintaining rangeland productivity in, in a changing climate and drilling down to the action level interest in particular in looking at livestock water and thinking about ways to deal with livestock water potentially differently in the future. So the piece of work that we ended up focusing on was because what we were hearing from ranchers was that they were quite concerned that the surface water 
on range was in the drier parts of the caribou was already um, in some cases drying up or reducing. They were quite concerned at, at being able to look at what the risks were to surface water on range and then I guess quite importantly how to manage that risk and how to continue to manage rangeland um, and the forage resource in a sustainable manner looking forward. This project was about creating a, a predictive tool and so a tool that would inform water management and development decisions in particular, it was created and it created and tested a surface water risk assessment and planning tool with just looking at three caribou range units specifically at the beginning. And what the tool does is it evaluates how future evaporation and climatic moisture deficit will impact water uh, resources within a range unit. And then it takes that information and combines it. And this is the really important part. It's not just looking at the water resource. Um, it is also combining that with the forage resource so that we can understand how management decisions on range um, might be affected by and by those two combined um, factors looking forward. Um, and the tool can now be applied to crown range planning and water development decisions. So the first phase of the project, which I've already described, is where we've created this risk assessment tool um, and tested it with just a small number of range units. We are now moving into expanding um, the use of the tool to map and develop the data for a larger number of range units and also to transfer the tool over um, for the use of uh, Ethel and ORD range staff so that they can work with ranchers to support um, planning on sustainable range use. Um, and we are very excited to be moving into some demonstration projects in the near future, likely three pilot demonstration projects, again in partnership with Ethel and ORD um, and local producers to actually develop um, water um, on the ground and then monitor that over time to see whether this um, risk assessment tool and using it to support um, management decisions is actually um, enabling the producers to, to manage more effectively. Um, and again, a number of partners have been involved in this work and will continue to be involved in the, in the next stages that I've described. Um, the cattle industry, both at the regional level and provincial level, um, and the different levels of government. And I've already mentioned that uh, Forest Land, nat Land's Natural Resource Operations and Rural Development have been a really key partner, uh, and the local producers as we move into this pilot phase. And the final project that I'm going to describe um, is really a whole series of projects that we've that we've had going on to deal with uh, another impact area that has been common um, across several regions. So I've I've got more than one region identified at the top here because this has been a cross-cutting concern um, in multiple areas: the Caribou, the Okanagan, and when I say new plans, there I'm talking about the evolving Kootenay and Boundary and Balkan Achaco and Fraser Fort George plans. Um, lots of concern about this increasing wildfire risk, which I've already mentioned. And the strategies and the actions are really about supporting individual farming and ranching operations with being able to prepare for and, and mitigate um, for wildfire impacts. Um, and the action here was to pilot and deliver wildfire preparedness and mitigation planning tools for individual operations. And through a series of projects that we've delivered, we have been able to develop a new resource that is now available to farmers and ranchers, a guide and a workbook that supports just thinking through all of the, the stages of preparing for a wildfire and anything that a producer might be able to do to protect their assets and minimize impacts. So we have a before, during and after structure to, to this workbook. It's really important with a resource like this to get a lot of input. So we had multiple sessions in different parts of the province to gather all of the producers or feedback about what the critical content was to support a guide that would really assist them with planning and being prepared. And we were able to start sharing that set of tools out with producers in 2018. In fact, it was the cattlemen working with AgSafe that were the first ones to d deliver a workshop series across the province where they used those materials to walk producers through thinking about creating their own operational plan for wildfire preparedness. And we are now in the process of delivering a whole new set of workshops this year, 2019, for producers to orient them to using these materials. And I just have a screenshot here of some of the content of the workbook. It, it is actually a fillable PDF so that producers can, can fill it in and, and use it, keep it for their records and continue to update it. And you can see the, the range of content that this workbook covers. Um, everything from things like livestock relocation to, to insurance considerations to asset protection considerations. So 
really trying to cover the full range of issues that a farm or ranch might want to consider around wildfire preparedness. And again, I don't have a slide for the partnerships for that project, but because it was a whole series of projects, but there were lots of uh, agencies and groups involved in supporting the development of those materials. And this is just my concluding slide to uh, try and kind of wrap up thinking through all of these different programs that I've described and the, and the way that we're working at the Climate Action Initiative and, and really highlighting again that collaboration has been a really fundamental foundation to our work and is going to be really important looking forward. So when we think about adaptation, recognizing that we have this very broad scope and scale of issues that we're dealing with, we're really talking about shared resources like our land base, the ecological systems that we depend on, the water that we depend on. And these are very cross-cutting, cross-agency types of challenges where we have to work across different levels of government and different departments, um, which is not necessarily a natural thing and is challenging, but is really important for, for effective adaptation. I've already mentioned, I think, fairly fairly frequently through this presentation, these are complex and intersecting issues. And we're really talking about the need for planning and action to be occurring at a lot of different levels at the same time. And finally, I really just want to highlight, because this is part of an education series to, to reach out to people who are thinking about, hopefully, th their future work, we really need new knowledge and tools to be brought to bear to adaptation in this province. We need a broad range of expertise uh, and people who can work across silos, because we really are going to need to work together across different types of knowledge to effectively adapt. This is my final slide, just to highlight that all of the materials that I've been talking about, all of the projects, all of the resources are available on our website. We also do have an e-newsletter, which we encourage people to sign up for. And you're welcome to, uh, to look on social media as well. Um, and we, uh, we hope uh, people will follow through and um, stay in touch. Mm -hmm.